Hey everyone, I am Josh and I'm Jack. And across the table from us, we have Barberton graduate and Detroit Lions defensive lineman, John Kaminsky. We are gonna to talk to him right after this. You're listening to Magic City Neighbors on the mic, where we talk to your Barberton neighbors about their stories, their insights, and what gets them laughing. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And now, to the show. Hey everyone, welcome back to Magic City Neighbors on the mic. And are you looking for a great way to reach people in Barberton? Consider advertising your business right here on Magic City Neighbors on the mic. With a page reach last month of over 10,000, you can get directly to the Magic City Neighbors that you want to. Send us a message today as sponsorship slots are actually filling up really quickly. So as I said before in the first part, I'm Josh. I'm Jack. And then we have John Kaminsky here. And John, so you graduated from Barberton. And what do you do now? Anything special? Yeah, yeah still playing football. <laughs> yep. Oh, just just still playing You're football. In the league yeah, or a, right. just rec league? Or? I think it's uh, the NFL. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh I, nice. have you heard of that, Jeff? I have before. I once, have too. I You're with the Detroit Lions, correct? Yep. Defensive line, correct? Yep. That is a world unlike anything that I have ever seen before in terms of what you guys have to do and the things that you go through. To me, that being said, You've got the story about your shirt. The one year of focus and hustle can change your life forever shirt. And you said you want like 50 of them now because you're going to wear that one out. Right. <laughs> How did you get that shirt? And, and I mean, tell, I mean, I know I realize it's the saying on it is kind of the inspiration. What, mm -hmm. I mean, what does it come from? What does it mean for, for you? Uh, yeah. So my agent, Cliff Brady, got me that shirt and yeah. uh, he had given it to one of his other players and you know, they buckled down for a year and they ended up getting a contract that they were dreaming of. And uh, he tried the same thing with me and I really liked it. And yeah, I told him, give me a couple more because I'm wearing this one out, you know, <laughs> every day to work out. I like wearing it. Um, what did that shirt smell like then? No, they were clean. I had, you know, eight, nine. A whole of them. stack. Of okay, them. so you had a stack. Okay, you didn't just have one. one. Right. I was worried that you're working out every <laughs> some day. Some were worn out more than others, you know. <laughs> then you order some more and you get rid of them. So. Nice. Um, yeah, so it. It was uh, it's kind of like the affirmation thing, you know, you see something every day and it just kind of sits in your mind all the time and you slowly just start to make decisions um, that are going to chase that. And if you embed that in you, you know, one year of hard work and hustle, that's all I'm thinking about all the time. You know, when you, it's decision time, you know, you're that's influencing you. So it really helped me. And uh, a year later, I ended up signing my contract. So it's a, that's a awesome. cool story. Yeah. That's, Congrats. And that's so yeah. I mean, did it did it? mean a ton of sacrifice and what did you really have to focus on with that i guess is kind of my questions in that yeah um i just kept my it just kept me focused because you just think sometimes you can think big picture in the nfl what am i going to be like in year eight and you're not focused on what year five is going to look like or year four is going to look like okay um and so it just kind of created a one-year window and um I, I was able to stay focused and just take it day by day and not be thinking big picture and being distracted by what I could be in three years, what can I be today? What can I be next week? What can I be this year? So that makes sense. So it's it's really is it's just that singularity, that single focus on how can I make myself better for tomorrow, for the end of this year. Right. I've got to get from point A to point B. Right. And that is the way to do it. That's yep. interesting. Because that's then the other thing was is the I also read that you had that the text from head coach Dan Campbell saying, I'm dying to have you here. Yeah. What was that feeling like? I mean, what was that text like? I guess I got to say. Yeah, it's cool. It's a guy you look up to. I mean, even if I wasn't in the NFL, he'd be a guy that I'd be rooting for. You know, he's just uh, he's easy to love. So um, I'm already a fan of him. And then him, he's my head coach, you know, and they're, uh, you know, they're fighting to get me back. We want to figure out how we can get back. And um, they offer me a deal. And then that text message comes afterwards. And it just felt uh, it felt real personal and it felt awesome. And I knew I knew they wanted me back and I wanted to be back, but it was just, it was just such a cool moment, you know, that they were like, I had made this offer that was pretty significant. And then, you know, so they're backing up what they're saying about me all year long. And then, so it was just cool. It's cool to go back and 
be a part of that uh, organization again. Did that feel like that? <coughs> I guess I would say with that, the culmination of that one year t-shirt, was that like, oh yeah, that is what the t-shirt means? Yeah. Like, I mean, that's, that t-shirt dr drove me to making that contract happen for myself because it was all new going into Detroit. You know, I needed something to keep me focused and that shirt served that purpose for me. And, um, about a year after putting that shirt on, I was signing that contract. So it was just, it was just a cool little story, little chapter in my life. You know? Yeah. It's just, uh, it was a life changing year for me. And it's, it's so fun when you get to see the proof of concept, because there's so many sayings exactly. out there where you're like, eh, I don't know if that means something, but you're like, Oh, this, yeah, that, that meant something. It made it right. mean something. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that right. uh, made it mean something. What what you got, Jack? You so, got some interesting stuff. Yeah, asking about Barbadian since this is where you're from. Um, how did it help you focus and get to where you are today? Uh, just being from Barbadian and being in the area. Wow. Um, I had such a good group of friends. I think um, it was just yeah that sense of community here in Barbadian, and uh, I was I had a lot of friends, and the, all our parents knew each other, and it was just a nice tight community and it, and it gave me a foundation um, growing up and um, and you know and th that fun childhood and all those experiences they certainly serve to <clears throat> want to create that for other people you know and um, so I was blessed to have the childhood I had in Barberton and um, yeah so yeah and then uh, your mission statement for the Kaminsky Foundation states we envision tight-knit communities that have a passion for supporting their local youth to help create opportunities for a stronger future our passion is to help those who need it the most are youth. Does some of that stem from your Barbadian roots? Oh yeah, it all stems from Barbadian roots. Um, you know, some kids had it better than others. And um, you know, you always want to, you always want to pull along those that are less fortunate than you. And I, I know that those problems exist in Barbadian. I know not everybody's got it easy. Some have it easier than others, but um, you know, that's that's why we wanted to interject and, and bring some support to Barbadian. You know, it's where I'm from and, and this community helped me to um, fulfill what I wanted to do. So to create that for the kids here and everything. Yeah, definitely it all comes Very back cool. from my experience in Barbadon and wanting the feedback into the community. Um, I just, it, it's always going to have a piece of me here. Mm. That's <clears throat> nice. to me, that's awesome. And you brought your cleats, right? Yeah. Because those have that special meaning. Right. That's, I mean, Check them out. I was about to say, put them up on the table here and I'll, I'll, sure, I'll I mean, we'll have, we'll have some description here. Um, for for those that are just kind of listening, those things. First off, they're sweet. They are. Um, I could stick both feet in them. Mm -hmm. in, in one of them is. Uh, <laughs> so I mean, are those specific to you? Um, I mean, what what's the story yes. behind them? So they do my calls, my cleats in the NFL, and okay. uh, a lot of guys. It's an opportunity for them to either uh, promote their own charities or promote a charity that they support. And so we've done this and, um, yeah, you can see that you did a custom paint job. I yeah. Think, um, not to give credit to the guy. I can't think of it right now. Um, who painted these for me, but yeah, I got the lo logo right here. Uh, Barbara and magic's colors. And he even stenciled in me and my wife here on the back. I saw that. That is yeah. amazing. crazy. And yeah, so it was just a good opportunity on the NFL stage to, uh, you know, promote the foundation, bring some light to Barberton. So, um, and it's pretty cool. It's a cool little collector item, you know, maybe one day in a fundraiser or something, it'll be a little prize or something. You know? For sure. Yeah. So that would be amazing. Yeah. And I mean, the, the throwback to the thing that I love about them also is, I mean, that purple is going to stand out, especially right. among a bunch of lions uniforms that purple is going to be like yeah. wow so <laughs> people are going to gonna ask see them, yeah they're going to see them they're right. going to ask the questions to me that's absolutely awesome that's and it's great that you guys are doing that yeah it's just back. it's one of the fun things that um you get to do when you have a foundation you know when you're in the nfl and this opportunity comes around you support a nonprofit that you want to support and i just so happen to have opened my own because i listened to some guys who did it themselves and um, these are just, this is just some of the coolest things that you get to do is, you know, I got my face and my wife's face painted on there beautifully and I'm wearing it, um, before the game, you know, and they're snapping pictures and stuff and people are seeing it, asking about it. So it's just, uh, it's really cool. It's just one of those things, you know, one of those things you just don't hear about until you get there. Yeah. It's just one of those blessings you get to experience. That's, <laughs> and it's, so it's one of those other things that makes that year of work worth it right yeah right. that's there's there's sacrifices to it obviously and when mm -hmm. you get that year of work done that's the uh 
that to me is a good segue into kind of our what we like to call our rapid fire. Is this still called the rapid fire round? Unless we changed it that I didn't know about. Yet. No. OK, so it's still the <laughs> rapid fire round. So this is kind of and it goes along with what people want to know. So whether it's questions we get through Facebook or Instagram or whatever. And okay, so let me do some water which, before the rapid yeah, fire. Go right ahead. Yeah, no, you got to Got to stay hydrated. <laughs> got to stay hydrated for rapid fire round here because this is super intense or not. Let's but go. It's it's probably similar to being on the defensive line, right. at, at least from my knowledge, it is. That's the same. <laughs> right, right. So what's the toughest part mentally of the NFL? And I mean, I assume this kind of translates to a lot of things just at the top level, because you are you're at yeah. the top level of the game. So what is the toughest part like mentally of that? And there's a few things, but one thing that sticks out, and I think that I'm starting to get over this and just starting to enjoy it a little bit more. but. And there's always a lingering um, feeling that you could be replaced any day. And um, that's heavy on guys. You know, you're you're trying you're getting an apartment and you're getting comfortable. You're getting all your furniture moved up there just for the possibility that you might get released. And so just like the lingering knowledge, knowing how quick guys turn over and teams turn over and guys get traded and cut and released yeah. and brought back in. And then you got to think about you're making friends along the way. So if it's not yourself, you're worried about, you're worried about your buddy and his wife's getting close to my wife. And so um, it was tough. It's tough to see guys come and go like that. And, um, and so it was tough for me to get over that personally. And then when you start making friends and then you're losing those friends in that environment, you you want to have a couple good buddies, you know. And so when you're losing them, it's, it hurts. So um it's definitely one of the harder things <clears throat> that amongst a few others yeah it makes yeah sense. no that that makes sense because there's that you need that personal support at, yeah. at, at high level anything you need yeah. personal support. probably a lot of people that don't even see being in the nfl it's a whole i mean it's they're people right because like, you're right. not looking at it just like it's a, oh we're watching games like they're exactly. really living their lives as much as people are that are sitting behind the tv watching so yeah definitely makes yeah. sense yeah it's just uh it's everything's so business transactions mm -hmm. and it just so happens that it comes at the expense of people's emotions and, and friendships and stuff so yeah. yeah it's just tough it's tough to get over but um you know i don't i don't worry about it so much anymore and i i appreciate the time i get with any players that i become close with and try to stay in contact if you know if life leads us that way so yeah there's a just, long text just, thread yeah <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> right uh what's your favorite thing to do outside of football what hobbies do you have i really love to golf and uh I like getting out to golf. Me and my dad like to golf. My brother. It's what we've always done it. Um, we're not the best. We're not very good at all, actually. But um, as long as you enjoy it, uh, yeah. I actually took out um, I took out a windshield on Turkey at Turkey Foot. You know, the main road going right down the nice. middle. Yeah, hit the back windshield. I bet not a lot of people have done that. It's pretty know, rare. Yeah, <laughs> seen the ball go in the car, and then the timing's just working out. And I see the back windshield just go white. You know, because when it shatters and splinters, it goes like, yeah. Pretty but no, I, I love golfing. Nice. Um, even if I hit one good shot, it's worth going out. Yeah. Day. I love it so much. So that is golfing. awesome. So <clears throat> golf pro is not going to be after you retire from the no, NFL. Probably not. Okay. I'd have to really okay. buckle down and focus. And, okay. Right. You, one you year need, for that would it be more than one year of focus yeah, on that? Probably be about five or six. <laughs> <laughs> So you're obviously, I mean, your defensive line, most guys on defensive line are not Jack and my size. And anyone that can look on the camera here sees obviously that you are, I mean, you're Jack and my size to combined. What's for breakfast most days? I'm assuming it's not a bowl of cocoa crisps. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's got to be a lot, whatever it is, you got to eat a lot. You get, you know, we got a workout coming up. So I usually, it's just one of those full breakfasts. You go out, you know, eggs, you know, get a breakfast meat, sausage or bacon, um, French toast, throw some pancakes together, eat a big bowl of cereal, yogurt, berries, whatever. You're just trying to add up calories, make sure you're nice and full and got a lot of energy for the day. Um, can't really skip breakfast. If you skip breakfast, you're going to be working out and you're getting lightheaded. So um you just gotta eat a lot i gotta eat a lot and i gotta eat often and then uh it's become a job itself for sure eating my relationship with food is definitely different than most people um it's part of the job just consuming food so yeah. <laughs> wake I, up I, want, I want that part of the job i want that part of the job and then uh what would be your fondest childhood location in barberton 
What's that? Like your fondest childhood location? Like mm. what was your favorite place growing up when you were here? Wow, uh, I grew up all sides of Barberton and I had friends in all sides of Barberton. Um, I'd say all the parks. Um, I grew up around Edgewood. I grew up around uh, Chrisman Park. I spent time at Tusk, Brightenstein, uh, McCafferty, all the parks. I mean, we would ride our bikes and hang out. So um, I'd, I'd say the parks, you know, that's kind of where we rallied and all the kids in the neighborhood would meet up on our bikes and do whatever, go buy a Polar Pop for 59 cents. And uh, just those days. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> You're getting scrapping quarters together just to get a 32 ounce pop. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I just I just that's uh, some of my better memories is riding my bike around, just going to the gas station, buying candy bars and, you know, just goofing around, riding around, take the towpath up to Cleveland if we're feeling bold that day. You know, so, yeah, um, yeah. Just being outside those parks. Yeah. Nice. Good Interesting. Memories. Parks of <clears throat> the, a lot of people have said park stuff about Barberton because yeah. there is there's mm -hmm. really a good network of parks here for people to go to. Yeah. Um, that being said, we are to our two big questions and mine of which is what is your favorite Barberton folklore slash tall tale slash rumors slash what scared the hell out of you as a kid, mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. So as I mentioned, we were on our bikes a lot. And so, um, you know, all the old abandoned buildings, there'd always be stories about them being haunted or whatever. And I went to Portage, uh, for what kindergarten to second or third grade. And there was a house catty corner that was big up on the hill there was ivy wrapped all around it, all the bushes and foliage and um it was a spooky looking house and w there was always rumors of that house being haunted so you know you'd always zoom your bike you wouldn't take that way home at night when the street lights are off you know maybe you avoid the uh, you go across street the street right yeah yeah okay. take a different route so yeah. take a different route mm -hmm. good call good call and yeah. you survived because of that that's right that's good yeah, good that's glad good. you're here good to follow yeah <laughs> and then um what do you see as the future for Barberton and like where do you think we're headed as a community and what are the bright spots that you see? Um, yeah, I love, I love, uh, first and foremost, the school system. You got Barberton High School and you got the middle school right there. I love that. I think it's cool. It creates like a little mini campus in Barberton. It's got that like, I don't know, almost, yeah, just like a campus feel. You got everybody right there. <clears throat> um, so I'm, I just think, uh, I think the schools are doing a good job. I think. Uh, they just redid that bus garage down there too. I don't know if you've yeah. seen it driving up. Uh, what is that, Norton Avenue or um, yeah. Morgan? Um, yeah, so it's beautiful down there and and uh, downtown scene. You got Cave and you know you got a couple breakfast joints there. You got Scoops over there on the east side is doing really good and uh, business is doing good and <clears throat> it seems like we got a strong community. You know, I've spent some time with the Kiwanis Club and the Rotary Club and stuff and got to hear some people that you know, kind of do some things out in the community. And it seems like um, there's enough people that care. And uh, I think the future is bright for Barbara and I'm excited to be a part of it. So yeah. that's awesome. That's awesome. To yeah. me, that's that is a great way for us to end this because, yes, we're highlighting bright spots. You just picked out about half a dozen of them. Yeah, maybe more. Yeah. Um, so for us, Beautiful. once again, do us a favor, like, share, subscribe. By all means, we've got some other great guests lined up. Make sure you stay tuned and we will catch you guys soon. We'll see you. Thank Thanks. You.